struggle in this, I'm self-conscious, I don't like this part about myself or whatever that might be, that does not make you weaker. That actually makes you stronger and a badass because you've got the balls, you've got whatever you wanna call them to own that and work on it. Because guess what? When you make the decision to own that part of you that you're not proud of, that you need no needs work, it no longer owns you. That's what I call taking your power back. I see my victory so clear. I see my victory so clear. It's a day we break through. It's a day we break through. It's a day we break through. It's a day you. That's what I call taking your power back. And I want to tell you a story, guys, because a lot of people feel like they have to do this thing by themselves. They feel like they have to go on this one man journey. And while there are times you do have to do that, I'm talking about the big picture context. I wanna tell you a story. I wanna tell you of a story of someone who was going on a journey and they thought that it would be just, you know, a, a short walk. But as they started to go down the road, they realized that the journey was a lot farther than they thought it would be. They realized it would take a lot longer to go from where they are to the end destination that initially they thought was just down the road, but was really way down the other state line, like maybe the other side of the country. We're talking metaphorically here, okay? So they start walking down this road and they have a couple choices. They see some cars driving down the road and they think, wow, if I keep walking, it's gonna take me a really long time. And by the way, it's gonna be so long that it might rain and storm. It might snowstorm. It might do some crazy 2020 stuff where there's murder hornets and aliens and who knows what else, right? But, Here's where the mindset kicks in. If I keep trudging along, I'm gonna be a tough guy. I'm gonna be self-made. And while you might do that, and that might work and that can work, it's going to take you a very long time. You're going to get a lot of scars. You're going to make a lot of mistakes and have a lot of pain that you did not need to go through. Here's another thing. The person, same person's walking down, same situation, but there's a different mindset. They see the cars driving by the road and they think, wow, being in a car would really save me a lot of time. What a great idea. I'm gonna build my own car. I've never built one before. I'm not a mechanic, but I'm gonna figure it out. So they divert attention away from their journey to figuring out how to build a car. So see, the energy is now shifted. They just got distracted. So they figure out like, okay, it's gotta have four wheels or maybe they wanna build a bike and two wheels. So they, they, they literally start making a wheel and then make another wheel. And then they've gotta make the engine and the components and the seats and all that. And guess what? They've never built a car before, so it takes them a long time. They make a lot of mistakes and it takes them all of their energy from going down the path to get to where they wanna go to figure out how to make a car. And it takes them a long time, but they eventually do it. You know, it, it, it's, it, it definitely needs some work and it clunks along and they do get there a little bit faster than if they just walked, but the time it took them to understand and build a car took away from that time. So it just about balanced out, if not took a little longer than just walking down the road. Here's a third option. You're walking down the road and you see someone in a beautiful Maserati and you think, that's my dream car. <sighs> what a machine. I like that car. And there's a red light, so the car is stopped, and you get the courage to compliment the driver, because the window's down. 
and you say, that's a nice car. It's actually my dream car. You must be, you know, so proud and all this stuff and whatever. And you strike up some friendly conversation and the driver sees your drive and perseverance and just the look in your eye of amazement and it's genuine. And he has the heart and says, you know what? Get in. Now, I'm not saying get in cars with strangers, okay? So let's take a little asterisk here. But what I'm saying is you build rapport. They under, you understand part of their journey. You, they understand part of your goals and you, they, they, they just have a genuine desire to help you. So they let you in the car. Now, here is where this gets interesting. You start to ask questions. Now, there's a couple things that can happen here. You can just be a weirdo and go down the car and they drive and they're like, this is odd. So then they get out and say, you know, they pull over not too far down the road and say like, uh, there, there's no interaction here. I, I thought there would be some sort of rapport, but there's, there's nothing here. This is awkward, uh, so please leave. Okay, so that's one thing. You're not actively engaged in the interaction. Here's another option. You get in the car, you have great conversation, and eventually you are driving along for hours and hours, and he says, we're here. And guess what? The driver that pulled over and gave you a ride has been doing all the driving. And guess what? He was driving to where he wanted to go. You were along for the ride, but you never mentioned your goal. You never took ownership and took the questions you were asking. So you gained a lot of knowledge, but you weren't able to put it into practice because he was in the driver's seat. And you ended up at a destination, but it was not yours. You ended up getting diverted because while you learned things, you did not put them into practice. You made a destination, but it wasn't where you wanted to go. Here's another way it can go. You get in the car, you strike up a conversation, you share your dreams, and you start picking the driver's brain. How can I do this? What can I do? And he's so fascinated by your genuine interest. He says, you know, you're asking a lot of questions about this journey, about this car, about how I got here. I love how passionate you are and you're asking the right questions. How about you take the wheel? And you're like, what? Wow. And you, you, you've been asking questions because you've never been in a Maserati before. It's a little bit different. So you, you've asked questions, you gain the knowledge, but now you get the opportunity to put it into practice. You've now transformed knowledge into wisdom. Totally different game. And here's the cool thing. You get in the driver's seat, put your hands on that steering wheel. You just beam with excitement and you can't believe that your dream car is literally, you're grasping the steering wheel. Like you are literally in your dream car and this person that has answered these questions and talked to you about your journey and shared what he's learned wrong his and mistakes he's made and what he tried to do that didn't work out and what he wish he knew when he started this journey. He shared with you and now you're putting it into practice. He also says, where are you looking to go? I have some extra time. I'd love to support you on your journey and see you drive to your destination. Guess what? You're the one that puts your foot on the gas. You've got the car that someone else helped you with. You're in your dream that someone else guided you to, and you're taking that knowledge that someone shared with you and putting it into practice. You've literally created wisdom, and you end up going to your destination because you spoke it, you made it real, and you're driving with this person to your end destination and you get there, but you didn't get there alone. This is a metaphor about what it takes to go the distance and get to your destination. You cannot get there alone. You can try, it'll take you longer, you'll make a lot more mistakes, you'll waste so much more time that could have been saved and implemented into living your dream life rather than getting there. You can speed up the process, you can expedite that if you have a mentor. Now, there's another piece of the puzzle. Mentorship is a lot more than just finding someone that's light years ahead of you and asking them questions. 
I have, in my journey through pharmacy, found that there is a lot more value and it's a lot more longer lasting if you implement what I call the three levels of mentorship. I see my victory so clear. I see my victory so clear. It's a day to break through.